Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah? can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's really? disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. There could be a strategy. That strategy was it's a terrible, very strategy. Very terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Welcome to The Advocate. This would officially make it the 45th time we've opened this dynamic program with these very words. It's been a real treat tabling and thrashing out those issues that scratch and tickle us, preferring solutions and sometimes simply increasing understanding. We don't plan on letting up though. As we mark our 45th edition, we've prepared a selection of the best of The Advocate for your delight and inspiration. On the menu for today's edition, Emeka makes the argument that the anchor of underdevelopment is rooted in tradition and religion. Uche challenges that our relationships are becoming more transactional and less love-inspired. Chuka states categorically that this salary scandal must stop. Libros tables a frank submission on our most recent economic summit, whereas I'm simply saying that Nigerians are probably one of the wonders of the world. With such a spread, I hope we have you salivating in anticipation. So, as I like to say, strap up and sit back and prepare to be shaken and stirred. If we don't call it out, it will seem as though we condone it. Many years ago, my wife warned me. She said, anyone who comes to you and starts up a conversation discussion and starts um, and adds things like in the name of God I'm born again I'm a pastor you can trust me she said flee first time I didn't listen I said no Obi and I and I were in school together we go way back he's a good guy well that story didn't end well look I'm a big believer in African arts and culture but I do have to admit that a huge aspect of our African problem is our anchor to tradition we do have a reluctance in most parts of Africa to let go. The reluctance to let go of certain aspects of our traditional culture, which has held us back and has denied us the ability to embrace innovation and change. We often value the past more than we look forward to the future. Afraid to let go of our glorious heritage, which was and still is steeped in small gods, most of these gods that failed us when the white man came with superior weapons of violence gods of unexplainable things, gods that can never be questioned, a disdain for exploration, a persistent apathy to new ideas, and indeed a sacred duty to excommunicate those who do. And sadly, we have carried over this mindset to Christian religiousness. Touch not my anointed, you hear that all the time, has become the new cover for religious leaders and indeed political leaders who abuse their calling and exploit their flocks. See how conveniently we have moved on to the white man's gods, yet despising our own gods and unwilling to let go of our tradition. We rather enjoy the mercy of foreign gods and dread the judgment of Amadio and Shongo. Until our old ways give way to the new, we're doomed to live in this vicious cycle of self-harm and underdevelopment. When there's an abundant incentive to worship the status quo, there will equally be a corresponding high probability that we remain as we are, stagnant, and accusing others of our failure to move forward. Even within government and public service, there's a certain aversion to knowledge and rigor. Especially in Nigeria, this is my own personal experience, we want the best of everything, but abhor the hard work required. It is after all cheaper to call on God or blame others. We claim we want development, yet we delight in a destructive mentality of scarcity and anchor of tradition. Development and progress requires us to let go, question the status quo, embrace possibilities, and constantly adapt. Otherwise, the distance between what we hope for, wish for, pray for, and what we actually get will grow even further. <laughs> so, do you want to jump in? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> uh, well, um, it's um, issues it's concerning, one? it's a tough one. Okay. It's a tough one and very sensitive, you know, because of how, you know, emotionally yeah. charged we get when it comes to issue of religion, you know. Um, um, a whole lot has, you know, changed. Yeah. I mean, earlier we were talking about, you know, how, you know, um, religion, different religions. And for me, I think um, it's, it's, I, I, I want to be very you careful. Be. I Why are you being be so very, careful? Be Nothing will happen. You're among friends. <laughs> yeah, I want to be very careful with, with, with We'll deal religion. with you. <laughs> Maybe I'll just okay. let you. Okay. Well, yeah, I think yes. I, I, when I, you know, listening to it, um, I, it resonated completely with me. It's true. We don't want to let go of our tradition. When and yet at the same time, there are certain very important anchors within that tradition that we're so that we've so easily let go of, and um, uh, and that's why we're going to be contradicting ourselves for for very many years, even as an architect. Um, my buildings don't look Nigerian, don't look Nigerian, but they are Nigerian because spatial hierarchy and space organization of, you know, of spaces within the buildings that I do are drawn from uh, historical examples of Nigerian buildings. So I'm sure a lot of people were surprised at a lecture recently where somebody was saying uh, Igbo architecture and uh, <laughs> mentioned three architects who he felt were Igbo today's architects today's Igbo architects. There was me, and I'm sure that drew shock from everybody, because like, that guy's a modernist, I mean, you know, and all that. And what it is is very simple. There are a lot of people who, in our field, uh, feel that um, unless it looks like that Igbo building from 100 years ago, then it isn't. And that's not true. We must make progress. It's a must. Mm -hmm. There must be that evolution and movement and innovation. We have to, you know, I'm not saying change for change's sake. Well, you have to. Times are different, and you can't tell me that the same thing solves the problem uh, of uh, today. Uh, well, I mean, my, my issue, I, I, I like the fact that you are looking for, I call it a backstory, mm -hmm. as to why we are the way we are. You're trying to, because I think, like, like we just discussed, mm -hmm. xenophobia, unless you puzzle these things, unless you apply your mind to it, you're in danger of just ending up in this cycle of and not understanding what is triggering certain behaviors, certain attitudes. And it's clear we seem to be caught in a kind of what? It's a circle. Yeah. With, so, yeah. but, but I, I, there, there's certain things for me that are contradictory in what you're saying. So, um, for example, and I'll let you answer when I finish, I'm not clear what is the old and what is the new. Mm. And I'm not clear, for me, it would work better to sort of say, okay, we have a certain way of approaching things as a people, and that right. plays out in the way we do politics, in the way we practice religion, even in the way we relate to our fellow human, even in the way we do business. Because I know uh, my, my in-law, who is South African, just happens to be, was saying to me that we have a way of white South African, we have a way of revering that his problem with the way we do business is that we still carry on this reverence, you know, which translates to nepotism. We still want to, we don't want to hold people accountable in ways that we should. And so we don't practice professionally yeah. within our business systems. So he has a problem with the way, you know, you oga, oga, oga. So you won't make the oga be transparent and give you. And so he sees that in, in the way we relate to ourselves. And, in, and he would like to see more of why haven't you done this in a professional capacity. That way, maybe we'll have systems that work for us. And he sees it in our politics. He sees it in our religious practices. You know, taught not my anointed. So that's the way I would want to approach that. We're already a people who are predisposed to be a bit too reverential for reasons we haven't even articulated to ourselves. And so we find it hard. You know, like I, I, I as you all know, I, I, I practice. I'm a Christian. But I always have issues in church gatherings because I refuse to call anybody daddy or mommy. And I tell them the reason I won't do that because I want people to hold you accountable the day you say something outside of what is scriptural. And they don't like the way I approach my own because I say, you're not God. You're just an instrument that God could use, but you could also deviate. So I want to be watching you from enough of a distance. I don't, I don't subscribe to all this mentoring, mentoring. Yeah, yeah. And people come to me and they say, I say, don't mentor. Because I can easily adopt, I can watch Seidu without him becoming my mentor. And I can take things from him. Yeah, you know, absolutely. I can. You know, you would know. I don't need to take everything from me because I know that the day you then step outside of what is right, I will, know, I'll, I'll, I'll quickly abandon. I'll why abandon must I it. mark your footsteps? Why am I? Why are we always looking for someone to come under? So those are my issues with us, and I wish we were less like that and more critical, more holding people accountable and understanding that we have a right to say to someone, 
why are you doing what you're doing? Give us an account of your, your, your stewardship without fear, without you know, feeling as if you've done something wrong. You know, you know so, so, so the reason for this advocacy or this premise is that I find that you know, um, when I mean culture and tradition, there's certain things. So we, we want to live in two worlds. The, 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 the African, modern African wants to live in two worlds. Mm. We want to live in the world of, of the, the Western, Western white world. Yes. And we also want to hold back to a tradition. And so you're caught Between in, this, yeah. in this two. And you're not the young generation are yeah, even more caught. Yeah, you're not able to move forward. Um, and I find it from how we dress, how we, how we talk, how the issue of who we hold accountable, you want to hold this person accountable, oh, he's an old man, respect him. Mm. But the man is doing something wrong. Mm. He's not doing his job. You say, ah, but you know he's an old man. You know we're, not, we're supposed to respect our elders. Yeah. Heck no. If he's not yeah. fit for the job, he's not fit him. for the Professor job. Professor Shrinkle on the plane. It's, 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 mm. it's wrong, it's wrong. It's not a question of whether because he's an old man. Mm. You know, in fact, the reason why he's an, if he's an old man, he should know better. Yeah, should mm. know better. He should know better. Mm. So this thing about you have people in churches, um, even though he's a knight of the Catholic Church, someone has died, they go to the village, the woman must shave her hair, must wash the body mm, of yeah. the of And the drink dead, the water of the, the water. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it is a knight. Then he will tell you in church, yeah. ah, you know, Mr. Mbai, you know, this is leave church things for church. Or this one is tradition. Mm, mm. You go to church, you give to Caesar, what is Caesar? Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let's lose <laughs> one. Let yes. lose. If you're going to go, because you cannot, you cannot. And that is why in Western Europe, in the age of reformation, and, and they had to lose yeah, something. something. So, but let me ask forward. you, because you cannot. Let me you and, and that's a problem with modern religion here today, mm -hmm. yeah. that we sit in this new, brave new Nigeria, and we hold, and that's why you find so much religion, and yet so much poverty, and yet so much struggle, corruption so much and corruption. everything. Because people will always excuse it, it is God. Yeah. God is the most convenient vehicle, but it's not our God. Because if you tell somebody, swear with Ahmad Yoha, in fact, I'll just swear, I'll, swear, I'll, swear. I'll, okay, I was gonna Mr. Say Mbak, that. you're going to office now. Let's take you to to the swear, swear. He will not. He will say, "Give me the Bible," because mm. he, he believes that that, that God is very distant. That God is very forgiving. He will not follow the God of his uh, his, uh, his village. Mm. I was going to say so, that if the National Assembly members were asked to swear by Ahmad Yoha and Shongo and the you. rest, a lot of them will not follow. <laughs> yes. I'm not sure. But quite. Don't face I, it. Don't, don't I, face I have it. a reason for why they may swear. not do that. Right. But I will, I will, I, I will yeah, be because debated. They know, they know yeah. the consequences. I will, I will, they will I will, never risk it. It's not direct. It's it's not direct. No, no, I don't, I don't agree with you. I don't agree with you guys. But I will go there. Well, dialogue continues to be the best way to build bridges. We trust we have gone some way towards bridging gaps in our conversations towards national development. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. So the moment impressed. you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria is for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a terrible. Terrible. Like fire. a terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. What's love got to do with it? Isn't it strange that I even have to ask? I got into a discussion with a neighbor of mine over the weekend with regards to relationships. She boldly declared that she couldn't date or marry a man who didn't have money. That she was looking for a man who would change her life like a Ned Woko. Well, for those of you that don't know who this fellow is, he is an ex-senator, I believe, who is married to a 21-year-old Regina Daniels, a Nollywood actress. A man who would pay her bills and take care of her. The lady in question is a law graduate, by the way. Abroad, such women are known as sugar babies. This is the reason Nigerian women are often called materialistic. This is not just peculiar to our women. There is an ever-increasing number of Nigerian men opting for this lifestyle. They only date wealthy women or have sugar mummies. Gone are the days when men took pride in being the protector and provider. 
Now they want to be kept by rich women who are only too willing to oblige. It seems love no longer has anything to do with who we date or marry. Money, on the other hand, does. As far as I'm concerned, those that partake in such relationships are nothing but prostitutes. Many marriages don't survive these days because they are based on money, not love. What we have now are people who are with each other for what they can get. And once that is no longer forthcoming, the relationship grinds to an immediate halt. What happened to building a life together? What happened to both contributing financially? I thought we women wanted equality. In what way does this advance the cause? What happened to love? It is time we stop looking to others to take care of us and our needs and instead dig deep to create our own wealth. Instead of wanting to enjoy the good life at someone else's expense and reap where we didn't sow, why don't we each develop ourselves to ensure we have something of value to bring to the relationship? Let love, not money, be the glue that binds our relationships together. Because love, as the saying goes, conquers all. Hmm. Including the love of money. Exactly. Oh, well, Maybe, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, to be, oh. to, be, to be quite, you know, I, I've always thought about this. To be quite fair, it is absolutely difficult not to be, not to, not to be lured by money, uh, not to want money, not to want enjoyment, mm. you know? So sometimes when I, I mean, I can almost say that, well, Uche, I don't think yes, you can advocate I this all you want. <laughs> yeah, you this thing is not going anywhere. I'm on the other side I'm going of to the start camp. like that, you know? <laughs> that, that, I, I want to hear about ba it. Ba basically, mm. it, it's, 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 it's not that's practical. it, it's an aphrodisiac. That's, that's, not, that's what money is. Money is an aphrodisiac. I mean, forget no, but, but I, let me even ask. It's very attractive. The, the, the things people are seeking, through mm. money. Mm. This is my advocacy and this right. is why I'm very happy with what Uche is saying. Mm. You'll get it times 20 if love is in place. So mm. for example, you're seeking security. <laughs> if somebody <laughs> loves you, believe it, you won't even have to say <laughs> without, anything. They'll be going money. over and above. A romantic. No, if somebody okay, no, no, no. <laughs> let me, let me, even, let me even make the point. Make if somebody point. loves you, they're already looking to give you more than what you mm -hmm. want. Be, and so it, it's just the means that may be constraining them. But make no mistake, once that person hits the jackpot, they will go over and above. They're looking for how to impress you with money. <laughs> but if, somebody, if you're doing it by contract, you won't get trust by contract. Mm -hmm. You won't get, you know, so that the certain things, you, even when you have all the money, you'll still find that you have that vacuum. You know, so I can speak from experience, and I'm sorry to use myself. I, I, I just have feel to say free. it. Feel you know, free. I feel that what has really made me the person I am is because I'm in a loving relationship. Mm -hmm. And that then allows that person to go. So a lot of times, the person is going above and beyond, and people are like, ah, they, they're looking at me like I'm a pampered person. But I know that the person's heart is to do anything they can. So I'm not having to beg for money. I'm not having to look for, I have access. I'm the, I call myself the chancellor of Exchequer because I handle all the accounts. Mm. Well, so there's trust there. See, no. Because the she person knows me. She has an account No, for all the accounts. Even, even when I wasn't working, I handled all the accounts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I wasn't love. going into the money. There was love. There. there was money in the first place. I wasn't going into yeah. the relationship. Yeah. No, even when we were, we were, you know, we, I remember when we started off, we were sleeping in the living room of my mother-in-law's flat. Mm. So at night, we bring out our mattress. So he didn't have, we didn't have he, we, he was doing you know whatever he could do and I was doing whatever I could do but we weren't marrying on the basis of if the money was in place mm -hmm. I know like even my wedding ring till today costs less than what people would pay for transport but if someone gave me on a voucher and that's how we got married mm -hmm. we're printing our own wedding invitation mm -hmm. things yes, on yes. our lap you know so we were we were really at, we started together like two children in a sense and you know so we were ready to go the distance money wasn't a prerequisite so I always feel sorry when people put money before love because you get all the things you want with money and that vacuum Will still be there. You mm. can't buy the things you really want with money. That's that's my bottom line. Mm. I suppose. Mm. I, yeah, look at. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, no, no. no. Yeah. So, 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 story is a romantic version. No, it is. What it is. Yes. It's the reality is. Romantic the reality is. I mean, okay. I, okay. Look, I, oh, I, I love love. <laughs> yeah, I love and love. And love. love. Yeah? love. Yeah? I love love. Yeah. But the reality today is, and and I'm just being real politic. The reality is that you know people are. You know, there's a lot of desperation. There's a lot of, um, let's put a scarcity of so many things within but the system. But will you let that affect your mindset? That scarcity um, mentality you advocated against? Yeah, so, so this is the thing, though. And, 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 and that's why I'm saying it, because this is what I see. Mm -hmm. I see the people who, uh, you know, in a huge sense of deprivation, 
And the fact that money anywhere in the world is an attractive itself, as, as, as Chuka said, is an aphrodisiac of some sort. Mm -hmm. and, and people from time in memory have been attracted to, to powerful men or women with, with access to money and power. It's a mirage. It's, it's, it just happens. It is a mirage. It is some sort of a mirage, but it provides cold comfort yeah. at the time that it but is available. There'll be those losers. So, there's a meme in, in, on social media where young boys, uh, young men in Abuja, let me say young boys, Dress nice starch kaftans, white Mercedes, mm -hmm. and he has his, his suitcase in the in the trunk. He has nothing, nowhere else but that nice. Car. He might not have. That's his investment. Yeah, yeah, that's his investment. He has invested in so looking, big, good. Sorry, looking good. Has a car. And he has a car, nice clean Mercedes mm -hmm. C three hundred. I think that's the model. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and and he's he makes himself sort of available. Oh, that's yes. true. He wants yeah. 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 Yes, he makes himself available man. at places. Mm -hmm. Well, if you see him, Gucci belts, smelling nice, like smelling invest in the things that... Yeah. And he will blow, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, love is important in of a relationship. Course. But I, I, I believe that, you know, we are being... Coerced. And, you know, influenced. By... Yeah, by, um, by, or, yeah, by the yeah. good things, yes. <laughs> um, but for, look, my advice to any young person, yeah? Um, follow love. Say, did you believe in love? Mm. I do believe in love. I would want to take it back to family values again. How right. have you been raised? Okay. What are those things that you hold? Uh, in? Influencing your What choices? are the things mm. influencing mm. you? Now, if you come from a home where, just hypothetically saying now, um, a broken home or single parent home where there's so much pressure, you know, money wise and things like that, there's a tendency that you'd gravitate in that direction. You know, so there's so many influences that, you know, are beyond you. Subtle, some, you know, and some that you just find, like the society that we're in today, it's all about what you have, you know, even within families. Yeah. You know, the younger one that is wealthy is the one that's called to the table to take decisions. You know, so it's unfortunate. But true, love, as much as we'd like for it to trump, you know, money is still king. Oh my goodness. Oh, Money is king. Love is king. Oh my goodness. You just broke my heart. I started going around like Money that. Is king. Well done, Sadie. I was waiting for somebody to start. Oh. For me, it's like the opposite Somebody of Chuka's did. advocacy because if you build up money, the foundation, that's why Nigeria is where it is. Yes. Because people still make money king. And I feel yeah. until you stop thinking like that, letting I'll external factors dictate your choices, mm -hmm. you're not, you're in good, no, good I think, nowhere. I, I think to some extent what people do mm -hmm. is that they, they, they do want love, yes. But the love, has, the love has to be, With has security. to be, yeah. has to be, um, no, let me, um, yeah, you'll be surprised. <laughs> um, the love has to be on certain terms. So um, you, you look for a certain kind of guy that, give that, 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 can, that you can love but has that security. Yeah, I mean, so there's nothing wrong with that? money. So you know I'm what I mean? There's some people that I mean, they don't fall based for on somebody. No, but you know, that's why they say for better, for worse. Mm. Those things you're calling security today, mm. you have to be ready to factor in the fact that if they are not there, well, you what do what still happened? remain. Mm. Possibly. That's where the love no, then, now. that's right. where the love back is the rule, the love test. Okay, guys. Well, I know we can continue to debate this forever, right? When all is said and done, I'm inclined to believe that money me personally, not Seydu, <laughs> can't buy love. Yeah, right on, sister. <laughs> Thank you. Why do we act as though events that require planning and investment will happen by accident? So, I'm talking salary scandal. We can complain all we want. Nothing will change until we visit the subject of payments, conditions of service and bonuses for political office holders, starting with the president. We continue to complain about massive kickbacks that inflate infrastructural project costs. These undocumented sums go to the same politicians whose conditions of service are way out of this world. So most of the damage stems from the actions of a small select group of citizens. The judiciary appears to be entrenched in this system of cash shares so that if we took this matter to court, we will probably get nowhere. As I watched the Supreme Court of the UK hear the matter of the prorogation of Parliament by Boris Johnson, I was impressed with the proceedings in a manner that I wasn't when I watched the Nigerian Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. No one was in doubt that at this level, Buhari would be returned, even though he appears to have neither a certificate, nor did he see it fit to file whatever he had when he applied for the job. So, the share cost of state houses alone is scandalous, 
as soul rock is way beyond what we require when there are Nigerians without a roof over their heads. The cost of cars for government will shock many. All this for chaps and ladies who govern a wretched nation. Still, we have to work within the law. If there are enough persons who feel prepared to move against the remuneration of politicians, I'm ready. I do not have the money, but can chip in. We must start there. If we need to go to an international court, let's go. It's one fight at a time. Yeah, nice one, Chuka. You know, I've been, I think we really must have this conversation. We have it in, in private, but for some reason, we never take it out there. I don't know why, as, you know, citizens of this country, we have not protested about this. We protest about uh, subsidy, all manner of things, but this we really ought to protest about. And secondly, I, you know, we need to look at why our politicians are like treated as full-time um, employees when most of the time they're not even around. They're not, they, they don't spend that much time in parliament doing much else. You know, before you know it, they'll soon go on recess and meanwhile they're collecting copious amounts of money. Um, I know a guy who, well, two actually, they're in the House of Reps, and you'll be, uh, I'll tell you what they earn because they've told me, I'm just not going to release their names, okay. but they take home at least 10 million naira every month. That's just the, then they have other bonuses and other things, housing allowance and clothing and you name it mm. on top of that. So ultimately, I'm pretty sure it probably amasses, comes close to about 20M. Yeah. You know, I mean, it is crazy. And these men, what do you do? They don't do very much else. So I think it's about time we go out there. Chooks, I'm with you. You know, let's, let's go out there. Let's yeah. protest about this because it's only when we, we do this, you know, that can something happen in America. They earn 174, a, sen a senator earns $174,000. Compare that to, with what somebody's earning over here. Yeah, actually, the figures I found, you know, yes. I was, I was, when I was looking up this topic, yes. I think the uh, president of America earns $450,000. Mm -hmm. yes. That's everything inclusive. Right. Yes. Everything. Whereas everything. Our, our, our senators here earn 450 as their yes. padding. Pa pa yes. Yeah, it's yes. not yes. actually their main salary. Exactly. Even though the main salary is significantly less, less to, to yes. come somehow pull would. the wool over your mm -hmm. eyes. Mm -hmm. But the other surrounding costs, like you say, clothing and yes. so on, come to 450. Yeah. So you, we're competing with the, the president. The president of, of yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, but I, I think um, we really need to look at this thing carefully. Um, what they're earning is a result of what the law allows them to yeah. earn. Yeah. Yeah. You know, separation of power, the legislative arm, yes. they, with, uh, in conjunction with the revenue, mm. uh, I think the yes. guys have fixed the salaries. Mm -hmm. you know, so they, they, what they've done is not illegal. They pay themselves. So if we're going to change anything, yes. the uh, that's why advocacy no, has to not. come from them. Yes. They need to sit down and yes. revisit renumerations for yes. themselves. Yeah. But Shem you know. Sani from amongst them brought it up at least. Yes, that's yes. He's not even the only one. Jibril, um, remember that, um, what's his name? The, the one that, uh, he, he was a whistleblower. And when he blew the whistle on... Um, oh, that's the padding. Yeah. When he spoke oh, that's yes, when they padding. Yeah, and he blew the whistle on that. And what did they do? They suspended him. They, yes. they, they did all manner exactly. of things, you know. Exactly. I don't, it's not, the change isn't going to come from them. Yeah. We have to put pressure on them of course. to force that change. I, I, I agree. Yeah. Right. Mm. Don't uh, forget, these are people that have invested heavily to get there. So that's right. another <laughs> area no, we, we need to We need to be But what say do it's politicians because make losses if, if that is if, in if business want, terms? If you, if you don't want to pay them that much, then yes. you make the system of entry Easy exactly. barrier without making it so expensive. Mm -hmm. You buy forms, five million naira. Imagine. You have to campaign around all the countries. You'd invest so much. Definitely, they want to recover their money. So, if we need to address this thing carefully, we need to go back to the entry yes. uh, requirements. The, Make sure that these things are public. I, I, public. Sorry, I just want I, to. I, 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 right. I think no, I do agree. Looking with at you. it from an investment perspective, right. it's not the right way. It's meant to exactly. be a service, exactly. a public service, not an investment. Exactly. exactly. Then legality will not address it. It's a morality mm. issue now. Um, when I live in a country with this level of poverty, how do I feel mm -hmm. going on with the sizes of those salaries that we're mm. talking about? Mm. Don't also forget that this is a borrowed uh, uh, system of government. Right. And that's why it was really apt to go back to the United States and, and look at what the president earns. Mm -hmm. that, apart from the fact that the president of the United States pays for meals. Yes. 
Right. So right. it's not unlike here where you have a whole budget for mm. this and budget, budget for this, budget for that. Yeah. The, and the furniture, can you imagine? It's, it's, it's unimaginable. If you're, if you're around any of those politicians, honestly, um, the level of um, uh, the people around them, okay. their I've expenses heard argument as monthly, well. It's huge. And they're, they're running their own mini welfare their own cost, system. Mini welfare that's, system. That's why Dino Melaya is so popular. It's, because it's, it's, he, he throws out it's, bags it's, of rice. But it's still tokenism. Yes. What are you giving to these guys? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not making Does any it change their life? difference. It doesn't yeah. change their life. They still yes. remain poor, but you throw out some crumbs. Mm. Yeah. I really, I, I have to say, I, I sympathize with what yeah, you say to some extent. Yes. Yeah. That, yeah. That, that, let's be realistic. You know, these people, you're not going to overturn something. break their investments. Yeah, but then I then understand where Chuka is coming from because you really have to say, look, this thing is not going to go away by following the normal means, they will not let go of this thing easily. Because look at in the middle of where we are now, and they're still pushing for $50 million of jeeps for Imagine themselves. That. And even though, I'm sure if you said to them what happened to the jeeps of the last they four years, they'll laugh at you because yeah. they know that the previous senators They've have driven this. away with it. So <laughs> me, we want the one that's coming to us. So something needs to change. But I, I do agree that we need to start protesting yes, about we it. Have to. They need to hear that we are revolted by this level of, do you say, greed yes. and insensitivity towards our plight. You can't be looking at Why is it, though, that we don't? Because we hear about it, we talk about it, we even tweet about it, and then nothing. Nobody on the road. I mean, why, why is it that we've reached that point, just like you said, you know, like um, you mentioned about how we knew what the outcome of the electoral uh, tribunal oh, was going to yeah. be. Before Nobody even ever thought that Atiku was coming, <laughs> even though they tried to make us believe he was coming. No, it's uh, the truth. No, I mean, uh, you may have yeah, okay, <laughs> Let me land. I, I so I'm just trying to say that is no, it, is it the something. same? No, you please, yeah. you must come in. Mm. But what I'm trying to say is that is it the same reason why we don't protest against their salaries? Because we also know that they are the ones that Absolutely. will have to change the law. Are they going to want to change the law against That's themselves? Futile, so is it a futile? Is it that we I feel just it's the revolution now for me I, I, included all those things? <laughs> yes. So I, I, I'm taking I, it back to that. That was why I was happy to go out on the revolution now protest yes, yes, because I just okay. felt it was a whole gamut of, of everything things, that's going wrong. But I think see. this just takes us back to, you know, um, being very intentional, you know, when we elect the people that represent us. If you want to have proper representation in the National Assembly, then make sure you put the right people there, people that would actually go there and change things. Make That's yeah, like we have influence. No, we do. Um, concerning this election we talked about, honestly, I, I've heard and I'm still reading about different, the outcome, right, is mm -hmm. it's a reflection of you know the, the case voting. they present yeah. the Those voting okay. yeah so now buhari is there the people have voted him in we like it or not he's going to be there for the next four years that's what exactly we how want? we felt yeah. yes yeah. and the election tribunal based on the evidence that was presented before it a decision was taken yeah. it's either he yeah because i heard from a, a positive a clerk, and he seemed to be saying that Look, they, they, they didn't have a have strong found case. Any different. It's the, the, the case yes. is just so difficult. We, we should not keep going round. You know, not be sentimental about these things. If the evidences are not there, I mean, that's it. We pretty much said it. Um, a functional nation is not a random event. We have to invest in it. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you yeah. can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very terrible. Backfire. A terrible strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Giving with one hand and taking with another. It is a sleight of hand or a magician trick. A submit for our economic summit. The Nigerian Economic Summit held in Abuja on Monday, the 7th of October, 2019. And I wonder, apart from the rush to be counted among nations that hold the economic summit, do government ever take advice away from such events? The reason for my question is quite obvious. Because if you still think with such a summit as it is with 
serious-minded countries who listen to their economic advisors. Nigeria is on a path to greatness. You are probably dreaming and need to wake up fast. I hope they remember to inform the government in that summit that in the age where the world has become a global village and information travel faster than light, no right-thinking business person will invest his hard-earned money in your country where government doesn't obey her own rules and cut others. Where the biggest business is government. Even local businessmen would rather go into politics mm. and government than create businesses. No economy grow where her government pays 12% or more interest on treasury bills, and then expect people to establish factories. No nation neglects the education of our youth and expect a prosperous future. What should encourage a businessman to invest his one billion naira in agricultural sector when he can get 120 million profit on it by just fixing, fixing it in a bank for a few months? What should incentivize someone to create a job when he can get 15% profit with a mere phone call, 100% from forest trade, as rightly queried by Adi Tilewa, Adi Tomiwa, and economics. Closing our borders to stop smuggling of goods you don't produce at home, yet opening the same borders for medical tourism for public officials has a crippling effect on an economy. Charging high tariffs on all goods you don't produce or have alternative to, yet budgeting government for to subsidize the lifestyle of government officials is extended stupidity. Having interest rates as high as 35% are then expecting people to establish fa factories while government officials are busy buying properties abroad with funds from over inflicted government contract is wickedness. Increasing taxes, introducing toll, taxing cash deposit and withdrawal, the direct opposite of an incentive to increase productivity, while retaining huge salaries and expensive vehicles for both the legislatives and legislators is senseless. Lastly, granting amnesties to terrorists, militants, and bandits, killer headsmen, while trying those that question government spending and accountability for treason, treasonable felony is the height of our seriousness. And until we reverse this trend, our economy will continue to be in reverse gear. Quite. It has been in reverse forever. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very All those things listed there are just common sense. You don't need more than common sense. You don't need to study economics or law or anything to know that you don't squander money on yourself and then you tell others to go and work. Mm. It will never work. Even, I mean, I know how much can be made just for being a Forex dealer or working with them to get my Forex and whatever. The president has cooled you know, now because he's working hard. He's it, it, working hard at what? He has cooled. <laughs> I mean, I, I feel sad for this country because... We're heading nowhere fast. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what you think. I, mean, I, I was going to come in and say, um, you know, when, when we're talking the previous advocacy, what came to mind? I, I heard that there's a student in Zamfara in a university who actually made a constructive criticism, a bit like what you're saying. He said, look, that this governor, if he sold five of his cars, he could fund, and he gave an illustration, and he basically summarized, and they took the guy and imprisoned him. Yeah. Now, my question is, and the reason I brought it up is, say, it's, very, it's all very well us complaining, but Nigeria is a team, and people keep saying, you know, politics is a game of numbers. We're more in Nigeria who know that we're suffering at the hands of a few who are mismanaging our, you know. It's surely we can team up. Somebody then asked the question, why didn't a lawyer go and represent that student who managed to speak out? Why doesn't somebody in society get behind those who are willing to speak? you know, put themselves on the line to point out. Because we're never going to stop pointing out these things. That's what a democracy is all about. But then when that person goes forward, it's like, you know, a game of football and exposes themselves and says, you're doing the wrong thing. What do the rest of us do? Do we get behind them? Or do we stay in our homes and we, you know, we're armchair critics? You know, what do we do we, so that that voice of that person is amplified on our behalf? We live under a dictatorship. We're not in a democracy. That's what you have to understand. Um, look at the uh, Prime Minister of England prorogued um, Parliament and he was taken to court, and the Supreme Court said it was illegal. And immediately, it went, it, and they immediately didn't need to wait the, for, for interpretation. It, immediately, that was it. The, the speaker said... No, you see, the question I'm asking, now, I, I hear, okay. Our people can't do that, because me, I'm going to take who to court, and which court, and what will happen when I go to court. If, 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 if it's who difficult appointed, to... Who appointed, if it's difficult the, CGM, to yeah. who appointed the judge? No, even... You might even argue that the judges everywhere appointed by somebody. You know, I, I know the process is always mm -hmm. well laid out, but in the end, things are done by people. So yes. it's that people... is that there's institutions that do their job to ensure checks and balances, 
and those people who are in those institutions are not the owners of those institutions, and they have vowed and sworn to uphold uh, the values that that country has grown to have. We have no values in Nigeria. Obvious now. Not sorry. Not that we don't have values, and there's no, um, uh, the, 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 those in power have subjugated those values. No, but what I'm saying and is, Chuka, we can't. We, we have a choice. As far as I'm concerned, the choice is mm -hmm. before us now more than ever. Are you going to live with a victim mentality, or are you going to actually rise up? This is Nigerians, what this is what the spirit of the advocate says to me. Nigerians are you going to actually no. say we can do something about it, or we're going to forever stay and say we can't do anything? Because for me, that's a dead end. I, I can't live like that. So I have to always say to myself, there must be a way forward, and I will what find can you it. Do? Well, that's what I'm saying. As you, you start with advocating, us. then mm -hmm. you look for those who are sticking their necks out and you get behind them. Well, with funds. Yeah. Any exactly. way you can. And so looking for, funds, so. Th these days, looking for um, politicians or executives or legislators who are, you know, in the position to also change this situation, but they themselves are also silent or they themselves are also, they've also joined the bad wagon yeah. and c contributing to the decadence in the society. Mm. You know, I once ha um, I, I was speaking with a friend um, like, I some two weeks ago and, you know, he used to be the patriots of Nigeria, sticking his neck out and saying, this country, I would change this country. Amen. And just recently, you know, it's something to say amen for, really. So just recently, we had a conversation, and then he said, um, you know, I'm looking for a way out. And I'm like, even you looking for a way out. He says, hey, can I? <laughs> Does that make I'm sense? not looking for a way. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> you know, I mean, and so I'm like, what was your breaking you know, point? For someone who had, you know, you know, over time. These things are happening. What I'm trying to say is the countries that people are checking out to, people fought and died for those countries. Now you want to just emigrate and enjoy. There's nothing you're going to get in this life that you don't have to get it by believing okay. and you're, digging your heels in. Fight it's not going to be given to you on a you're, platform. You're you're fight, you fight, fight when there's you. a system. Okay. Why well, agree with you? you okay. People fought even when there was no system. Oh, no, 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 no. There were more systems than you saw. Okay. Maybe we'll look at history okay. of other, other, other democracies. Okay. I agree with you. Like I always say, that the mountain you run away from is waiting for you when you come back. I get But guess what? South Africans, we stand or they stood and fought apartheid. Why? Because they know that is hope. So let me borrow the word of Jesus and his followers. He will all, when he says, follow me, and I will make you. Who is telling you to follow him or her in Nigeria that he will make you? You are the one making yourself. You are the local government chairman of yourself, the state yeah. governor of yourself, the president of the Federal Republic of your family. Does that make sense to you? So when you live in that kind of atmosphere, Exactly. What is the hope? Listen to me. Mm. Every it has been it has been it has been said that until you give up in your soul, you cannot die. People are giving up every day in Nigeria because there is no hope. So the question is, where and is And it's only hope, hope that keeps you alive. And it's only hope we're still here. We're still here. So there must be hope. Exactly. A good place to we're still here. Well, that is why we are we're still advocating. Here. Yeah. So yeah. Well, um, hope. And so we are giving hope. Hope, like, well, we, hope 2020. Yes. So we keep advocating every day for the thief, one day for the owner of the house. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now. And when they're there, they're not even really making a mark. And then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics and enjoys for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's really. disastrous for a president to, even say to be he's unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's a terrible, like fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. Because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria is becoming a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. If we don't stop to marvel at the life around us, we're inclined to take it for granted, don't you think? Nigerians are probably one of the wonders of the world. The other day I was listening to the radio, it was a call-in show, and almost every other caller had traveled around the world and had extensive experience of life outside our borders. At the same time, I looked through the window and there was nothing to see but cars, cars, and more cars amidst the usual jam of traffic. Different models of cars, Jeeps, the latest model, salons too. This in a country where over 46% of its population of just under 200 million live on less than $2 a day. 
This equates to approximately 100 million people living below the poverty line. It was then that it hit me. Nigerians must be the most amazing people in the world. We're the perpetual die-hard hustlers. One of the most populous countries in the world with over 500 indigenous languages spoken across the country, rich in natural minerals, vegetation, oil, and of course, human resource. We're globetrotters. Nigerians inhabit almost every country in the world. Nigerians will still ask you, how was your night, with a smile, even when they can't vouch for what the day holds. They will respond, to, they will respond with, it is well, or God is good, almost by reflex amidst the most oppressive conditions. Nigerians are indeed deserving of accolades. To name a few, a Nigerian surgeon, Dr. Oluyinka Olutoye, was appointed surgeon in chief at the United States Hospital. He was part of the team who performed a surgery on the baby in utero in 2016. Do make time to read about the Imafidon family from Edo State who have been tagged Britain's brainiest family. Nigerians are one of the most creative people in the world, making advances in literary arts, music, the movie, and fashion industry, producing a Nobel laureate, Wale Shoenka, and others in the making. That we have artists like Yemi Alade, Dibanj, De Davido, Tiwa Savage, and the likes winning international awards is an open secret. After all, these artists have been spawned from a rich musical heritage. We're talking King Sonia Ade, Fela Nicolapo Kuti, Victor Waifu, the list stretches on. Our visual artists aren't left behind in putting us on the map. Njideka Kunyili, daughter of Dora Kunyili, set a record when her painting, Bush Babies, was auctioned at $3.4 million in a Los Angeles auction house. We celebrated 59 years of independence amidst indicators that would make many a heart stop, and yet our hearts are still pumping. We live on the brink, yet we're constantly on the lookout for a breakthrough. Every week, at least, I come across Nigerians who inspire me and make me proud. I am a Nigerian, and I'm proud. We are an indomitable people indeed. I want to dedicate this advocacy to the resilience of the human breed called Nigerians, probably. No, undoubtedly one of the wonders of the world. Yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready to yeah. be taken on. Yeah, we're, we're, we're so many. We're so many that um, the suicide, um, uh, the heavy numbers of suicide, we are not. Um, I didn't notice because we're too. Many. Yeah, no matter how so, we, so there are problems definitely, definitely if we are going to have high suicide rates mm. and high levels of uh, mental health and uh, and then what you've just described. Yeah, the resilience. So, really resilient. well, I, you know. I would definitely agree with you. Nigerians do make me wonder, okay, um, <laughs> and, 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 not, and not necessarily for the right reasons. Okay. You know, I do wonder when, where our breaking point is. Mm -hmm. I do wonder why we're so quick to accept any rubbish that is thrown at us with very little protesting going on. I do wonder how we wake up in the morning and, uh, like you said, we're still optimistic, even when everything looks doom, gloom, and bleak, and whatever. That is what I wonder about. I'm not sure it is a good thing that we are the way we are, because I feel that because we are the way we are, because we're, we're always looking for solutions to solve our own immediate problems, not Nigeria's problem as a whole, I feel that we're not going to get anywhere fast. Um, I, I love being a Nigerian because we're optimistic, we're vibrant, um, you know, we're hospitable. Those are the reasons I love being a Nigerian. But in terms of, are we really doing well? No. The Nigerians that do well are the Nigerians that have left these shores. And it's because they have gone abroad. Like, for instance, the doctor you mentioned. Mm. Did he perform that surgery in Nigeria? No, he didn't. No, I was gonna he performed it yeah. abroad. Yeah. Yeah. The, the brainiest family, sure, they're in Britain, yeah, in right? Britain. They're not Nigeria. Nigeria's brainiest okay. family. So let's be looking at it. A lot of the times, Nigerians are excelling. They're excelling because they're excelling in better environments, environments that equip them, that allow them to excel. See, which is why I said every every week, I didn't want to be say every day mm. because it could be like, well, I, I, I every week I meet Nigerians who are mm. who are performing yeah. and they're performing against the odds. No, but they, please, they are performing it, against it, the odds. Yeah. I can do that. Even in Nigeria. Nigeria, despite all the odds, there are Nigerians who are doing fantastically well. Yes, agreed. It was a Nigerian that stopped Ebola from. Oh, yes, yes. Was it Nigerian? Yes, it's yes. a Nigerian in yeah. this environment as well. And at several instances, including some 
things that just bring smile to your face. Mm. I was working on Broad Street a couple of weeks ago, and this guy just kept following me. What do you want to buy? I have shoe, I have shirt, I have this. Hmm. I didn't know what to say. I said I want to buy Calon. There wasn't anything like Calon. I don't even know what I said. He said, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't help but bust out laughing <laughs> that you will have Calon. What is this? <laughs> And apparently, what will it do? It will take you to where there are more people Correct. who probably would know what Calum is. He didn't want, want to give up on his hustle. He's not going to give up on you. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, come, come on, and have it. it. Yeah. You know, and that, that is, those are the kind of things that, that, that make me just love this country. Yeah. I, I had to pay for book in traffic one day using transfer for the bookseller. Mm. <laughs> 500, 500 naira. Okay. I, I said, ah, I don't have cash. You see, I did accept transfer. <laughs> And right it's inside the traffic there, I did transfer. Just, it's, yeah, but I think it's, it's so daring, sad, isn't it? It's so sad that we, you, you can see that we have great potential wow. in this country. Great potential. And all it takes is really to have the right conducive environment that would unleash Fantastic. this potential. Oh, so that's yeah. really what brings right. my heart. So, yeah. Yes, I see where you're that's coming from. That's why I call it a wonder, wonder, really, yeah. But it's also Such heartbreaking. Such a contradiction. It's not, yeah, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking it's, because look at it. Look at that guy that would have found Calon. I don't know. <laughs> I just wanted him to back up. Back yes. Up. yes. Uh, no, you would have to learn that in Nigeria. You tell him to back, back up. Even that, to find a way. <laughs> Otherwise, you're giving him more room for. for yeah, because to be um, some, someone, when I said, and I'm sure she'll watch this program and, and yeah. smile, when I said, Oh, I'm proud. The person took me on on, oh, you're proud. What are you proud about? There's nothing to be proud about being yeah. a Nigerian. No, 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 no. You know, so angry with me for using the expression proud because they felt I was patting Nigerian back and saying we've arrived. But I said, no, I'm looking at something intrinsic to being a Nigerian. We haven't yet come into our own. And I compared it to my children. They haven't arrived yet. They, there's so many things I could get annoyed with them about. But I see that intrinsic nature there. And it endears me to them. And I'm proud of them just the way they are because I'm looking at, OK, with a little more nurturing, with a little more, this child will get to. So Most I'm not. Yeah. Celebrating all the nonsense okay, you're we're you're doing. Celebrating I'm celebrating the being, the, the, because I feel that my, my identity. What, 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 yeah, and also yeah. me, I'm a Nigerian. My DNA is tied up with this nation. Mm. So I'm proud of the fact that I have some kind of connection to Nigeria. Please. I think that we need to celebrate the fact that despite the difficulties that mm -hmm. we have explored today, many Nigerians are surviving. We talked about those who don't have resilience and we kind of linked it with mental illness, but actually many Nigerians are very, very resilient. They keep smiling mm -hmm. in the midst of all the difficulties. And I think that is to be celebrated. It should be celebrated, but like I said, it is also a problem for us. Yes, I, I get we your are point. Not, we are not fighting for our rights yeah. as a reason because we're smiling and, and just, you know, taking it taking all. It all. Can, I, can I bring another element? I'm going to bring some psychology. That's part of our mental health <laughs> if you bring, padding. If you, if you look at the Maslow hierarchy of, um, yes. um, need. of need, do you get what I mean? It is very difficult for people at the bottom of the ladder, so to speak, in terms of they're struggling to have a roof over their head and food on the table for them to be aspiring to these higher things. That, that hierarchy Absolutely. teaches us that basically your, your basic needs need to be met before you can aspire higher. Yeah. So where, as um, Kenna pointed out, 100 million people live under the poverty line. Frankly speaking, it's people like us who in many respects are privileged who need to do the fighting yes. because those who don't Good can't point. even afford three meals a day are not going to be fighting for these higher no, it's, things. It's a valid right. point because even Chuka talking about education on his advocacy was saying look you know why are people preoccupied with tribalistic you know yeah. triggers is because they can only just think instinctively and you, you haven't really given them the space to now digest and even when we're looking at our education system and how terrible it is mm -hmm. the conditions there are not conducive to research to Thinking and developing your research. mind. Yeah. Come and see the environment they're coming research. out of. I think where would that student stop and reflect and think, I can change the world, I can develop a breakthrough, mm. you know, mm. solution? The, the they can't. The student that is facing sex, sex, or sex or harassment. Okay. <laughs> I always say this on every show, and I'm going to say it again. It's a deliberate action by our the elites. Yeah. We'll call it neglect then. Yeah, a deliberate. No, I think it's a deliberate. Neglect is different action. from deliberate action. Uh, I, I'm not sure I can yeah, get to deliberate. It's deliberate. deliberate yeah. Yeah. When you even look at our budgets, when you look at our budget, you will know that it's deliberate. They're not interested in education. They're not interested in healthcare. Yeah. Mm. They're interested in other things that don't yeah. impact 
on us. Yes. You know, the, 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 because even, even he said the state level, a governor who sees all his people, the populace in his state, are not educated. That should pain him. No. That should become a, a mission for him you know and say, these people must be enlightened so they can make right choices. Walking, because like you said, they're preoccupied with yeah. feeding and, and just the basic things that, you know, people just take for granted in other yeah. Western climes. So, like, we can't expect them to... It's, we can't expect them no. to rise up, yeah. leave the selling of their akara yeah, yeah. and be on the streets. It's, they won't it's, eat that it's, it's more of a, of um, it's more of the way of doing things in the north than mm. in the south. So even if you try to cure it in the south for whatever it is, it's when you get to the north that you realize that this this dedicated action to stop certain people from rising and stay where mm. they are mm. is. Severe, yes. and that's part of what I was saying in my there, advocacy. That it's all in the all north, our interest to make sure the north, the north are educated. Is, yes, yes, it's a mm. they, they are a big problem. Mm. Um, well, mean, if you put it like that, it sounds like in the north they have a system where there's a person that is really wealthy mm. and he will now take care of everybody and so they go to him mm. for, handouts. for handouts. Okay, well, I mean, again, yeah. I'm, I'm glad for Lasha they make that point that we have a responsibility, those of us who are privileged enough to think things through. Well, we've lamented, lampooned, provoked, and even patted ourselves on the back. Now it's time to call it a wrap. Provoking thought and change is what we aim to do here on The Advocate. We trust we've made some headway in both cases. As usual, we rely on you to take things further and beyond. So do keep the conversations going on our social media platforms, on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. We love hearing from you. Till next week when we're sure to have some freshly baked and spicy topics prepared just for you. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Bye-bye. Welcome to The Advocate, a program that thrashes out all the topical issues of the day. When you are in government, you don't see nothing wrong mm, with exactly. whatever is happening. The moment you are out there, Everything is that wrong. Is, you can't even see yes. many women now, and when they're there, they're not even really making a mark, and then they have an NYSC problem and this and that. One of the reasons why we don't have more women in politics in Nigeria for as long as political meetings continue to take place in the middle of the night. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. no, really. It's disastrous for a president to, even say to be unaware. unaware of it, the chief it's justice. It's a ploy. It could be a strategy. That strategy it's was a very terrible. Fire. A terrible <laughs> strategy. <laughs> because the box stops at your table. Whether it's that we don't look after our cities and quite frankly Nigeria has become in a very ugly place. Mm. When you are the only one feeding the people with this news and there is nobody countering them, it becomes, you know, the, the news. Yeah.